The year 2026 is shaping up to be a genuine turning point for Apple's professional desktop lineup. And at the center of that shift sits the Mac Studio, a product that has quietly become one of the most important machines Apple makes for creators, developers, video editors, engineers, and power users who need uncompromising desktop class performance without stepping into the far more expensive and niche Mac Pro territory. The next Mac Studio is not just expected to be a routine spec bump, but rather a carefully planned correction to the missteps and confusion that surrounded the previous generation. And according to current leaks, supply chain chatter, and Apple's own long-term silicon roadmap, the 2026 Mac Studio is expected to launch with not one but two major silicon upgrades in the form of the M5 Max and the long-awaited M5 Ultra. What makes this upcoming release especially exciting is not simply the promise of raw performance gains, which are expected to be substantial on their own, but the fact that Apple appears ready to restore balance and clarity to the Mac Studio lineup, something many professional users felt was missing in 2025. While the 2025 Mac Studio refresh did bring improvements that looked respectable on paper, it also left a noticeable portion of Apple's pro audience underwhelmed and even frustrated, particularly when it came to pricing logic tier separation and the surprisingly narrow real-world performance gap between the Max and Ultra configurations. To understand why anticipation for the 2026 Mac Studio is so intense, it's important to look back at where Apple left things in 2025 and why that generation felt so confusing to so many buyers. Yes, Apple did update the Mac Studio that year, and at first glance it seemed like a solid refresh, with the introduction of the M4 Max bringing meaningful CPU and GPU gains, improved efficiency, and stronger performance for demanding professional workflows such as 4K and 8K video editing, software development, 3D rendering, and large-scale multitasking. For a wide range of users, the M4 Max version of the Mac Studio hit a relatively comfortable sweet spot, offering strong performance at a price that, while not cheap, felt justifiable for professionals who rely on their machines to earn a living. However, the situation became far more controversial with the M3 Ultra. Although it was technically Apple's most powerful chip at the time, the M3 Ultra failed to deliver the dramatic leap many users expected from an ultra-tier product. In real-world benchmarks and day-to-day -day professional workloads, the performance difference between a fully configured M4 Max and the M3 Ultra often felt surprisingly modest, especially when weighed against the significant price gap. With the M3 Ultra Max Studio starting around $4,000 and the M4 Max version starting closer to $2,000, Many professionals questioned whether the Ultra variant made sense at all, and a large number of buyers ultimately chose to skip it entirely. Instead, they opted for the M4 Max, or even discounted M2 Ultra models, which in some cases offered better performance per dollar. This overlap in pricing and performance created confusion, frustration, and a sense that Apple had lost sight of the clear tiering that once defined its professional hardware lineup and it's something Apple is clearly aware of and seemingly determined to fix. In 2026, everything changes as Apple enters the M5 generation, and the narrative around the Mac Studio looks very different. All signs suggest that Apple plans to launch the Mac Studio with both the M5 Max and the M5 Ultra, restoring a sense of balance and giving users a much clearer reason to choose one tier over the other. The performance gap between the two chips is expected to be far more pronounced, efficiency gains more dramatic, and overall value significantly stronger, especially for users who truly need workstation-level power. Starting with the M5 Max, Apple appears ready to push its silicon architecture further than ever before, with leaks suggesting the chip could feature up to an 18-core CPU, a substantial jump over previous Max Glass chips. These cores are expected to be split between high-performance and efficiency cores, potentially around 14 performance cores and 4 efficiency cores, a configuration that would allow the Mac Studio to deliver exceptional multi-core performance while maintaining Apple's industry-leading power efficiency. 
for professionals compiling massive code bases, exporting large video projects, running multiple virtual machines, or juggling heavy multitasking workflows, the M5 Max should offer noticeable and immediately tangible improvements. Where things become even more impressive is on the GPU side, as the M5 Max is rumored to include up to a 42-core GPU, representing a major leap over previous generations. More importantly, Apple is expected to introduce architectural improvements that could result in GPU performance gains of 50 to 55 percent compared to the current generation. This has enormous implications for 3D rendering, motion graphics, advanced video effects, game development, and A-accelerated creative tools, and it positions the M5 Max as a chip that could realistically replace older Mac Pro configurations, something that would have seemed unthinkable just a few years ago. While the M5 Max alone is shaping up to be extremely powerful, the M5 Ultra is where Apple's ambitions truly come into focus. Unlike 2025, when Apple skipped an M4 Ultra entirely, 2026 is expected to bring a full generational leap with the M5 Ultra, which will essentially combine two M5 Max chips using Apple's UltraFusion technology. This could result in a CPU with up to 36 cores, likely split between 28 performance cores and 8 efficiency cores, firmly placing the Mac Studio in true workstation territory. This level of compute power would make the Mac Studio capable of handling extreme workloads such as large-scale simulations, professional film production pipelines, massive datasets, and enterprise-level software development with ease. On the GPU side, the M5 Ultra is rumored to push up to 84 cores, potentially delivering performance gains of 90 to 100% over the M3 Ultra, which is close to a full generational doubling and something rarely seen in desktop computing. This improvement isn't just about raw core counts either, as Apple is also expected to integrate next-generation AI accelerators similar to those seen in newer iPhone and iPad chips. These AI-focused components will play a major role in machine learning tasks, real-time video processing, and future Mac OS features built around Apple intelligence, making the 2026 Mac Studio not just faster, but more future-proof. One of the most important yet often overlooked aspects of the M5 generation is its focus on neural processing and AI acceleration. Apple has been quietly preparing macOS for a future where machine learning plays a central role in everyday workflows, from intelligent photo and video editing to real-time transcription, advanced search, automation, and on-device generative features. The Mac Studio with M5 chips is expected to be optimized for these tasks at the hardware level, ensuring that professionals benefit from AI-driven tools without relying heavily on cloud processing. In terms of physical design, don't expect radical changes, and that's likely a good thing. Apple is expected to keep the same Mac Studio enclosure, which has proven itself in terms of thermal performance thanks to its dual fan system and large internal heatsink. This design allows the Mac Studio to sustain high performance under heavy loads without excessive noise or thermal throttling. And given the amount of power the M5 Ultra could generate, sticking with a proven cooling solution makes perfect sense. There is some speculation about a new color option, possibly a darker or space black finish, but structurally, the Mac Studio is expected to remain familiar. Beyond the Mac Studio itself, there's growing speculation that Apple may also refresh its studio display lineup around the same time, potentially introducing higher refresh rates, improved HDR support, or even mini-LED or OLED technology. If Apple aligns these updates, the Mac Studio could become the centerpiece of a fully refreshed professional desktop ecosystem that feels cohesive, modern, and purpose-built for high-end workflows. As for timing, current information points to a summer 2026 release, with Apple likely announcing the new Mac Studio at WWDC 2026 in early June. If Apple follows its usual pattern, the device could become available within one to two weeks after the announcement, putting it in the hands of users by mid-June, a timeline that aligns perfectly with Apple's focus on developers and professionals. Pricing may end up being one of the most compelling aspects of the 2026 Mac Studio, 
as expectations suggest Apple will keep prices similar to previous generations while delivering significantly better value. The M5 Max Max Studio is expected to start around $2,000, while the M5 Ultra version could start around $4,000. But this time, the performance gap between the two tiers should clearly justify the price difference. For users upgrading from an M1 or M2 Max Studio, or even older Intel-based Macs, the leap in performance, efficiency, and capability is likely to feel enormous. Ultimately, the 2026 Mac Studio looks like an ideal upgrade for video editors working with 4K, 8K, or raw footage, 3D artists and motion designers, software developers and engineers, AI researchers and machine learning professionals, and power users who want Mac Pro level performance without Mac Pro pricing. If you skipped the M3 Ultra or felt the 2025 refresh didn't offer enough value, 2026 may finally be the moment worth waiting for, because the Mac Studio 2026 is shaping up to be one of Apple's most exciting professional releases in years, delivering not just incremental improvements, but a clear statement about the future of desktop computing on the Mac. Is this conversation helpful so far?